All right, good morning. Um, this is the last lesson in our trigonometry unit. Today, we're focusing on um, functions versus angles, but not restricted to quadrant one, but rather um, all angles theta um, less than or equal to 360 degrees. Okay, so uh, a reminder that we will be using the rounding table today again. Um, we are going to require knowledge of the cast rule, so hopefully you've already watched the short video on the cast rule. I have the um, diagram here in front of us for reference. Um, this is the method that we're going to use in our uh, lesson today. So it's got three steps. Um, we're going to be using the absolute value of the function to determine the first quadrant reference angle alpha with a calculator. So the key language here is that we're using the absolute value, meaning we will not work with a negative number. We will use a positive number only. This is how we will end up with a first quadrant reference angle that we'll call alpha, okay? After we have that reference angle, we'll be using the cast rule to determine the possible quadrants for theta. And uh, once we know the quadrants, we adjust alpha according to this chart. So if theta is in quadrant one, we make no adjustment. In quadrant one, theta is equal to alpha. But if um, we desire a quadrant two angle, the relationship is shown in the diagram here. Alpha will be this acute angle and theta, which is always measured from the positive x direction, um, will be found by taking 180 degrees and subtracting alpha. If the angle we desire is in quadrant three, the diagram here will be uh, important the acute angle alpha is illustrated and to find theta we start at the positive x-axis we move counterclockwise until we hit this um, side of the angle so this means we're taking 180 degrees the full straight line plus the angle alpha and lastly in quadrant four this diagram becomes helpful the reference angle, the acute angle, will be here in quadrant um, four, and theta is found again in the same way from the positive x direction all the way around counterclockwise until we hit the uh, terminal side of the angle. So this is um, 360 minus alpha. Okay, so. I think we'll begin with an example. So this is the kind of question um, that uh, we can expect right here. You can see it at the top of the page. Find theta if the cosine of theta is negative 0.5. Okay, so a couple of things to note. First of all, cosine is a main trig function. Okay, so we can work with it. It's on our calculators. But remember, the first step of this process requires us to find alpha and this means using the absolute value of negative 0.5. So again, all that means is that we use positive 0.5. We will never use a negative number in the step where we're finding alpha. So all I need to do is start by taking the cosine inverse of 0.5. So I do that with my calculator. Make sure your calculator's in degrees. Cosine inverse of 0.5 is, and you can see I got 60 degrees here. So that's the value of the reference angle alpha. It's an acute angle. It will always be an acute angle. Okay, so the next thing I do, so that's this part done, okay? That's this first part here done. The next thing I do is I need to use the cast rule to determine the possible quadrants for angle. So angle theta. So what does this mean? 
I want to know the quadrants possible if I have a negative cosine, because that's what we were given, is a negative cosine value. So I pose the following question then. Where is cosine negative? Okay, since that was what we were given, is a negative cosine value, that is the question that we want answered. Okay, so now in order to answer that question, of course, you're using the cast rule. So where is cosine negative? It is positive in quadrant one, where all, quadrant, where all functions are positive. It is also positive in quadrant four. C stands for cosine. So it is negative in these two quadrants, quadrants two and three. So the answer to our question is quadrants two and three. Okay, so that's this part done. Employ the cast rule. So now finally use the chart to determine the theta values. So basically I'm looking here in the chart for my quadrant two and three relationships. In order to find theta in quadrant two, we use 180 minus alpha and in quadrant three, 180 plus alpha. So theta in quadrant two is 180 degrees minus alpha was 60. And in quadrant three, theta is found by taking 180 degrees and adding the alpha or the 60 degrees. So we end up with 120 degrees or 240 degrees as our two final answers to the first problem. Okay, now according to the rounding table, the original function had only one significant digit. So in the chart, actually it would be one row above this, one significant digit. Um, so it would need a precision to the nearest 10 degrees. If we just expand the chart to have one significant digit in it, this would be then to the nearest 10 degrees. And you can see that these angles are naturally expressed to the nearest 10 degree. So the rounding table um, works um, automatically with our calculator value this time. Okay, let's try example B. Find theta if the cotangent of theta is 2.8458. Okay, first thing is, this is not a main function. This one was, this is not a main function. So before we begin, we have to change this to its reciprocal tangent. So that means taking one and dividing it by 2.8458, okay? which. You can work that value out if you like, right? With your calculator, one divided by 2.8458. Or you can just leave it um, like this so that you don't have to do any rounding. Okay, so now that we have a, a main trig function, we do the first step, which is finding that reference angle, that acute angle alpha. So how do we do that? Well, in this case, it'll be the tangent inverse. And we have to use the absolute value of this, um, which just means make sure you're using a positive answer. And certainly we were given a positive value to begin with. Okay, so all we have to do is take the tangent inverse of one over 2.8458 and we will have the appropriate alpha. Okay, so this is a Casio, and so to do this calculation, I go shift tangent, and now I wanna put this in, and I can use a fraction button, remember? One over 2.8458 equals, and so that is my alpha. And I have to round it, so I'm gonna use the rounding table now. Okay, this trig function has five significant digits. So let's look at our rounding table. 
it would be the next row in the chart. So if it has five significant digits and I expand the chart this way, I would be rounding the angle to three decimal places. Okay, so I take this and I round it to three decimal places, making it 19.361 degrees. Okay, so now I have my alpha. So again, First, we had to make it a main trig function. Then we had to find alpha using the inverse trig function, keeping the positive nature, okay, of the trig function. All right, now we're gonna do the next part. Use the cast rule. So I have to pose a, an appropriate question based on what we were given. We were given a positive cotangent value. So this means the question is, where is cotangent positive? Right, that would be the right question, but that's the same as asking where is tangent positive? Because remember the cast rule handles only the main trig functions. So asking where tangent is positive is the same as asking where cotangent is positive. Okay, oops, wrong one. So where is tangent positive? Here, where they are all positive, and here, where the T is. So the answer is quadrants one and three. Quadrants one and three is the answer. All right, so what are my two theta values then? Well, remember, in quadrant one, we don't change alpha, so theta equals alpha. In quadrant three, we have to do 180 plus alpha. So in quadrant one, theta is equal to 19.361 degrees. We make no adjustment to alpha, but for the quadrant three angle, we're doing 180 degrees plus 19.361 degrees and that's 199.361 degrees. So here are our two answers for problem B. And um, a quick note, once you've done the rounding correctly here, it will be um, perfect here and here. You don't have to check that rounding again. Okay, let's move on to a third example. Find theta if the cosecant of theta is negative 3.85. Okay, step one, this, this function cosecant is not on our calculators. So we have to start by changing it to sine. So that simply means we do, we do one over the negative 3.85. So this, is equal to the sine of theta. Okay, so first we have to make sure it's on our calculators. And sine is the reciprocal of cosecant. Okay, but now when we work out alpha, we're gonna do sine inverse, of course, to get the angle. The other thing we have to do, though, is make sure we don't include the negative sign now. Remember the rule is we have to use the absolute value of the function. And again, all that means is here, when we calculate alpha, we will never have a negative quantity. So we're gonna take the sine inverse of one over 3.85, okay? Oh, remember if, if you have a, a different kind of calculator other than Casio, you might have to do the number part first. So like one divided by 3.85 equals, and then shift sign equals, okay? So that's if, if you don't have a Casio. If you do have a Casio, it's probably easier to do shift sign first, and then put in the fraction, one over 3.85. Okay, so this is the reference angle alpha. We need to round it appropriately. This given trig function has three significant digits. So using our chart, we know we need to round the angle to the nearest tenth of a degree. So in this case, that would be 15.1 degrees. 
So that's alpha. Okay, now we ask the correct question to get the appropriate quadrants. The question is based on what you were given. We were given a negative cosecant function. So the question is, where is cosecant negative? And of course, that's the same as asking, where is sine negative? Better to use a main trig function when posing the question because that is what the cast rule handles. So where is sine negative? Sine is negative where it is not positive and it's positive where the S is and and in quadrant one where all functions are positive. Therefore, sine is negative in quadrants three and four. So three and four. So this now is where we adjust our alpha value to find theta. In quadrant three, 180 plus. In quadrant four, 360 minus. So we're doing 180 plus 15.1 degrees and 360 degrees minus 15.1 degrees. Okay, and when you just do that, you'll get 195.1 degrees and 344.9 degrees respectively. Okay, so when you do your unit test, um, it is important, very important, that you do show all of your steps, okay? Because you will get um, part marks for the calculation of that acute angle alpha. You'll get part marks for, for posing the correct question and for coming up with the correct quadrants. And then, of course, marks for the final answers. So please make sure you show all of your work um, on your pages um, for your unit test. Okay, let's try this one. Find theta. If the sine of theta is negative 0 0.325 and the tangent of theta is less than zero, this is another way of saying that the tangent of the angle theta is a negative number, right? Tangent of theta is negative, this says. Okay, so let's begin. This is a main function. So we are not going to be doing one divided by at all, okay? Because it's a main function. All right, take a look back here. When we had a main trig function, we did not do one divided by here. But when it's a reciprocal function, of course, that's when we have to do one over. Okay, so we can start by finding alpha. We're going to take the sine inverse of, now, absolute value, so positive 0.325 is what we're going to take the sine inverse of. So, sine inverse of 0.325 equals, okay, so this is um, our correct angle. The trigonometric function had three significant digits. So we will round our angle to the nearest tenth of a degree. So that means in this case, we will have, uh, when we round this to the tenth, of course, this nine becomes a 10. We carry the one, so actually we'll get 19.0 degrees. Okay, so that was our first step, calculating alpha. Now we have to pose the question. So we've got this new information added in question D here. And here's when it comes into play. Right now when we pose the question, the question should be based on this given information and this given information. So where is sine negative? and tangent negative. In other words, where are sine and tangent 
both negative. Okay, you should find this happens in only one place, one quadrant. So where are sine and tangent both negative? The only place where sine and tangent are both negative is right here because they are both positive here. Sine is positive here. Tangent is positive here. Only in quadrant four are they both negative. So the answer to the question is quadrant four. Only one quadrant. So this extra information here ensures that we only get one answer for theta. How do we find the angle theta in quadrant four? 360 minus alpha. So our one and only answer for theta is 360 degrees minus 19.0 degrees. And so it's 341.0 degrees. Okay, so the final answer is rounded to the nearest tenth because the original trigonometric value had three significant digits. Okay, we're gonna do one more problem together and then it'll be time for you to uh, practice some of these problems, okay? So last one is right here. Find the cotangent of theta when the secant of theta is 1.122 and the sine of theta is less than zero. So this is similar to part D in that we have this extra constraint here. So we're expecting just one quadrant to be of interest. Instead of find theta like A through D, if you read the language of A through D, they, they all just said find theta. Instead of find theta, now it says find the cotangent of theta. Well, this just means once we have found theta, we still have a bit of work to do. So we proceed just like we did in problem D, and then once we have theta, we'll have some extra work to do in order to find its cotangent. Okay, so let's get started. We start um, with the fact that the secant of theta is 1.122. This is not a main trig function. So we begin by changing it to a main trig function by using one over. And of course, co cosine is the reciprocal of secant. Okay, so please remember that all of those are included for you uh, on the Castrol page as well. Okay, so you can see here cosine is the reciprocal of secant, for example. All right, the value is positive. So we go ahead and we find alpha by doing the cosine inverse of one over 1.122. Okay, so. Um, shift cosine 1 over 1.122, like that, okay, or shift cosine and in a bracket 1 divided by 1.122, okay, like that, or, and this one will work if you have a different calculator other that requires it, you could do the 1 divided by 1.122 equals first, then shift cosine equals. Okay, so any of those ways, you can see that we're getting this angle here. Okay, um, and it is, uh, we were given four significant digits, which means that the angle should be rounded to two decimal places. So I'm gonna round it to two decimal places to write it down on the paper here. So 26.97 degrees is what we'd get. But in fact, it's better not to round this in this case since the, 
final thing we're finding isn't theta, but rather it's cotangent. Okay, so if, if there's a way that you can keep the answer in here, it, it will be um, better to do that. But I did round it properly to write it down in, in any case. Okay, now is the time when we ask the question. So what is the right question to ask? Where is secant positive and sine negative? Or where is cosine positive but sine negative? Right? That's the same as asking where is secant positive but sine negative. But we don't want to talk about any uh, reciprocal functions when we go to our cast rule. So we're looking for a positive cosine but a negative sine. So that'll happen right here. In quadrant four, cosine is positive and sine is negative. That's the only place where both of those things occur. So the answer is quadrant four, okay? Oh, normally I put the answer up here, but you're good with that, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, I can put it here as well. Quadrant four. Okay, so how do we find theta then if we are in quadrant four? Remember the chart tells us we're doing 360 minus alpha in quadrant four. Okay, you can look that up on your chart again if you need to, right? Quadrant four, 360 myself. Okay, so um, I wanna take this answer and subtract it from 360. So I can do that if I just do, you, I can use my answer button. So I can just do clear it and 360 minus the answer is, so I get this it's for theta. And again, to write it down, I'll show it to um, two decimal places. So 333.03 degrees, okay, is correct for the angle theta. Now normally for any of the other ones, A through D, we would be done because it would have said find theta. But this says find the cotangent of theta. So basically, we want to know what is the cotangent of 333.03 degrees. Well, basically, to figure that out, we just have to do 1 divided by the tangent of that angle. Okay, so maybe I'm going to use the answer button again. So I'm going to clear it and just do 1 divided by tangent of the answer. Clear it. So one divided by tangent of the answer is, and I get this answer right here. Now the answer I'm about to write down is a trig function. So it needs to be rounded like the given trig function initially was rounded, which means four significant digits. So negative 1.965 is correct for the cotangent of 333.03 degrees. Okay, so again, we were in this row of the chart. The trig functions have four significant digits while the angles are rounded to the nearest one hundredth. Okay, trig functions, four significant digits, angles, rounded to the nearest one hundredth. All right, so um, that's five examples in total. Please try the uh, suggested uh, homework exercises. And uh, remember that if you um, would like full marks on your test, which I'm sure you would, you'll need to show all of these different steps, okay? Including the calculation of that acute angle alpha, including the posing of the question and the right quadrant answer, and so on. 
Okay, thanks a lot and have a great day.